God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes should not die but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes should not die but have eternal life so turn from your sin and your selfish ways can't you picture the love on the Savior's face there was nobody else who could die in your place and he faced the pain alone for you for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes should not die but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes should not die but have eternal life I am the way and the life he said I am the truth and the living bread I'm the good shepherd who lays down his life and my sheep hear my voice and follow So into your life, in your joys and your tears, in the midst of your confusion, in the midst of your fears, through the breadth of the world and down through the long years, his promises all hold true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes should not die but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that if you believe you will not die but have eternal life you will not die but have eternal life Good morning Morning everyone Good morning Hello Good morning. Barbara Morning, are we all okay today on this wonderful Ascension Sunday? Yes, I'm okay. Are you okay, Barbara? What about everybody else? I'm hoping everyone's okay today and looking forward to worship. <laughs> are you feeling Indeed. refreshed Indeed. after your day off, Reverend Dave? Well, yes, it was It was nice to have a day off. And um, yes, and uh, what, uh, I was just wondering, what, how, how, how was it for you and your wonderful team on, on Friday? Oh, well, we, we missed you, but I don't think I can remember um, you having a day off since you arrived. But um, we had lovely Jill help us out with morning prayers on um, Friday morning. And then um, Alison's um, faith journey was shown. We didn't make her work on, on um, your special day, but that was really, really interesting. If you've not watched it, I encourage you to go and watch it because one thing yeah. for me... I I really am encouraged by other people how they practice their faith and and um Alison talked about Dr. Caroline Leaf's books, which yeah. are just amazing. We were just talking about this a minute ago, weren't we? We do a lot of yeah. Christian speak, don't we? T telling people to capture take every thought captive and to renew our minds, but yeah. we don't actually say how we do it. And she she talks about it. Yeah. And what's good, um, I mean, she, she's a clinical psychologist. She, she's top of the game all over the world. Um, but she, she speaks in a language that um, people can understand. So uh, her books are readable. Yeah. And she also has the, um, things on YouTube um, and Facebook that you can follow. So she does a lot of um, live um, speaking um, and, yes, and yeah, films. Really interesting. So, so you, ha you had a nice day then on Friday? We we did we we actually uh, we we had, we had a trip to the seaside. I can't remember where it was, Barbara, but there was a um, there was a great big tower there, wherever it was. We went there <laughs> for the day. 
Um, and then, then after we'd, we'd been there, we, we went and sat in different rooms in the vicarage, which was, which was a nice treat, actually. Yeah. So, but it was a good day. Brilliant. <laughs> well, it's lovely to have you back with us. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah. You know, I was, I was getting twitchy thinking, um, I should be doing something on Friday. What is it? What's going on? You know, there was, there was, there was a hole in my life. <laughs> well... Let's all, all bring our twitchiness and our worries and our fears and, and just fill that hole with the Holy Spirit. So as we come to worship. Okay. So before we begin our service as it's printed, with it being the Sunday after Ascension, I'm reading the first verse of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Because at Ascension, we remember that Christ is actually enthroned. We think of his coronation when he ascended on high, and now today he is reigning at the right-hand side of the Father. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem to crown him Lord of all. Alleluia. Jesus reigns on high. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll just take a moment to bring before the Lord anything that's distancing us from him and ask him to take care of that for us, to put it in his hands and know that he is a faithful God who loves us and wants to move us on in our journey to bring us closer to him. Christ, the light of the world, has been raised from the dead to dispel the darkness of our hearts. Let us confess our sins. Lord, through your self-giving love, you bring God's pardon and peace to our broken lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you bring us into the heavenly family. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, by your resurrection, you raise us from death to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, our Father, forgive us our sins and bring us to the fellowship of his table through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We turn to our reading from the Bible, and um, if you have your Bibles there, it will be helpful. The first reading today is taken from Acts chapter 1, the Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, and we begin reading at verse 6. So when they met together... They asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from a hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, 
James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we turn now to our Gospel reading, which is taken from the Gospel of St John this morning. We're reading from chapter 17, verses 1 to 11, and they're all the words of Jesus this morning. Jesus prays to be glorified. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we pray that you will grant us understanding as we consider your words and how they apply to our lives this day. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask in your name, for your honour, for your praise and for your glory. Amen. Well, it was Ascension on Thursday, and one of the um, odd things, in a way, is that Ascension Day is, is supposed to be a day in the Church of England where we're meant to have a service, but actually there are lots of um, churches within um, the Church of England, in the Anglican Communion, where it doesn't seem to be celebrated the way that it was intended. It's a bit overlooked, which one I think is an awful shame because actually what Ascension is, is an invitation to the coronation of Jesus. Now it's not that he's crowned every year, he's always the king, but it's a reminder of what he has done. Now for us in this country, we, we live in a constitutional monarchy, we understand um, what a privilege it is if, if anybody is invited to Buckingham Palace, either for a ceremony where they're recognised to be knighted or given an OBE or whatever. Uh, it, it will be a privilege to be invited to the Queen's garden party. And in any capacity, if we were invited to Buckingham Palace, we would see that as a great privilege. And yet, because we have a, a, a parliament and we, we, we live in the democracy, where actually it's, it's the people, it's Parliament that, that, that decide. Um, we live in that kind of society. So sometimes what we need to do is, is a bit of um, historical reversing and get our minds back into those days. I'm not saying we go back into those days, but get our minds back into those days when the king or the queen, they were the absolute ruler. And when you came before the king, or you came before the Queen, they had the power of life and death. They made decisions which affected the whole country. 
Before they had parliaments as we know it, they had councillors, they had advisors. But ultimately, there were days when a king or a queen would make a decision and people obeyed. If they said jump, people would say, how oh, high? Now, the reason I say that is not that Christ is a king like that in that manner. But we are going into the throne room of the king of the universe. And the ascension reminds us that he is seated at the right hand side of the father in that throne room. And our passage today from the gospel is about prayer. So if Jesus has ascended on high, one of the questions may be, well, what's he doing now then? What is he doing in that throne room? One of the answers is that he's praying, he's interceding. Why would Jesus need to pray and intercede? Well, it depends how you look on prayer. Prayer is that constant communion with God. Prayer is that unbroken fellowship Ideally, that's what prayer should be, this constant communication with God. Jesus is always in the Father's presence. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, in some way, we are connected to Jesus in that throne room. Spiritually, we are sons and daughters of the King. We are royalty spiritually, every single Christian. And when we pray, we are standing before the King in the throne room. We don't need to wait outside to be summoned. One of the problems I have is not with with the um, the spirit of it, but sometimes it's, it's sometimes the language that's used about prayer traditionally. So you may have heard people talking about we're storming the battlements of heaven as though we're meant to be kept out. I don't find that helpful language because heaven's another fortress where we can't we can't get into. We're, we're sons and daughters of the king. We have, we have di direct access to the king. And sometimes um, prayer, prayer is, is, is portrayed in, in such a way that it's a battle to get heard. Now, don't get me wrong there. The scriptures say clearly, Jesus says we need to ask, we need to knock, we need to seek, we need to persevere. But actually, in that asking, that seeking, that knocking... We are stood before the king. And the gospel today tells us that Jesus prays for his disciples. If we carry on with the rest of the gospel reading for, for reasons best known to those who compiled the lectionary, those who set the readings for, for the Church of England, um, it doesn't go to the end of John 17, where if we go to the end of that passage, Jesus includes a prayer for all those who will believe in him that, that's us but Jesus is there praying and Hebrews chapter 7 verse um, 25 says he is there he's always making intercession for the saints continually praying for us we have that direct access and so we have two images of, of, of prayer this morning one one is in the gospel that Jesus prays for himself that Jesus is the, the man in his flesh, preparing to return to heaven, would, would be glorified, but for the sake of the Father, in all that he's about to do. Remember, this is the upper room, and here I am in the old city of Jerusalem, as it were, with the aid of modern technology, in the upper room, sharing with those disciples what he's about to do. And he prays to his father about what he's about to do, go to the cross and die, to be in the tomb for three days, to be raised on high, uh, to be raised after three days, and then, then eventually after 40 days to, to go back into the kingdom of heaven at the right-hand side of the father. And he's praying that he would do that in such a way that all the glory would go to God. He prays that he will be glorified, but only for the sake of the Father. And only for the sake of us, because if Jesus is glorified, what he wants is to share that glory with his people. That's a very humbling thing. And so he prays for his disciples, that they will be in complete unity with one another. 
in the way that Jesus is in complete unity with the Father and the Spirit, that the disciples would be one, just as they are one. And so what's Jesus doing? He's praying. He's inviting us into that throne room. And so a reading from Acts tells us that the response of the disciples who are looking intently up into heaven, I find it in some ways a, a comical passage from, from Acts. Jesus ascends, the disciples are looking up, and the angels appear and say, what are you looking up there for? Well, it's the most natural thing to look up to Jesus. But they say, men of Galilee, don't be looking up. Be looking out into the world, to the mission field that God has placed you in. Now, that's not that we don't look up, up to heaven in prayer, but actually there is work to do in this world. And that is bringing other people to know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And their immediate response from leaving the Mount of Olives is to go to Jerusalem, to go to the upper room, and we find them praying. And what they're praying for is that the enthronement of Jesus would have an effect on their lives. They're waiting for the day of Pentecost, but they don't quite know what they're waiting for. They have a vague idea that they're waiting for the promise that Jesus has put before them. But they don't quite know what that is. They can't define it and they won't know until the day of, the day of Pentecost. And so here we are in this season of Thy Kingdom Come today. Um, do watch the film. It's about forgiveness today. It's a very powerful film. So you will see that on the Facebook page and the church website. There are links. But do, do look at that. And they're praying that what they just witnessed Jesus do, that it will be re revealed what they are to do next. And so there are two aspects. In a sense, yes, we do look up in our prayers to Jesus. We always do that. But we're looking up because the work that he wants us to do is out there in the world. I'm, I'm looking just over my laptop and I can see Devonshire Road and the houses on Devonshire Road. Our work is out there. Wherever we live, our work is out there. And to do that work, we cannot do it without the king empowering us. And so 10 days after the ascension, for us next Sunday, those apostles, but all those who hear them as well in Jerusalem, will be given the opportunity to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. What's Jesus doing in heaven? He's praying for us. What else is he going to do from heaven? He will pour out the Holy Spirit who comes from the Father and the Son. And although Pentecost was an historical event, it happened 2,000 years ago on that day of Pentecost, there is a sense that every single Christian needs their own Pentecost, their own encounter with God, their own renewal of the Holy Spirit. Why? Not just for ourselves, but for those that were sent to minister to. Remember, one of the themes of thy kingdom come is to be praying for five people. If you pray for more than that, don't worry about it. That's absolutely fine. But five people, which is a guideline, that you want them to be in a closer relationship with God, whether that's for the first time, whether it's a renewal of faith, whether they're upon your heart, be praying for those people that they will experience the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. What is Jesus doing in heaven? He's holding all things together by his power. He's sustaining every single one of us every day by his grace and mercy, pouring out the Holy Spirit upon us, pouring out strength upon us and taking us always into the very presence of the Father. So it is a shame that we don't celebrate ascension the way we should because it's a constant reminder that Jesus is King. And so what I wanted to do, I began the service with a verse from All Hail, um, the power of Jesus name. There we are taken from um, this lovely hymn book, All Hail the power of Jesus name. But I wanted to finish and um, how 
appropriate, I feel anyway, that it's a verse from one of the wonderful hymns of Charles Wesley. Jesus, the name, I, over all. And as we share the words of this verse, that, that will then lead us into prayer. Jesus, the name high over all, in hell or earth or sky, angels and men before it fall, and devils fear and fly. And then verse two, Jesus, the name to sinners dear, the name to sinners given, it scatters all their guilty fear, it turns their hell to heaven. Let us pray. And so, Sovereign Lord, King Jesus, we pray that we would see your rule and reign in our lives this day and every day. That we would see you ordering the details of our lives, answering our prayers and filling us afresh with the power of your Holy Spirit. For Lord Jesus Christ, I ask these prayers in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for that, Reverend Dave. I liked your analogy of um, the heaven um, not being the battleground, but the earth being our battleground, because it reminds me of, you know, one of my favourite mm. theologians, A.W. Tozer. He says, we yes. treat this world, he said, we treat this world like a playground and not a battleground. So that was kind yeah. of a good reminder. I, I understand the language people use, Barbara, sometimes, because they talk about, you know, uh, storming the gates of heaven and, and pressing through, and they understand all that. But I, I think the real battle, battleground is in us and around us. But I, 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 I believe firmly, based on scripture, that heaven is always open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the battle we have is to persevere in prayer. And, and um, as we were saying about Jacob, you know, the, the, the other day, Keep, keep reminding God of his promises. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where they get the um, storm in um, heaven with the prayer. is like raining it, raining them constantly because um, yeah. it, it is our sword, isn't it? We fight with um, prayer and the word and well, we have to have this connection with it being yeah. able to change us and change other people. Shall we resume with our service? Yes. And now we come to the creed. And as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ on high, we confirm our faith in the words of the creed. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to a time of prayer, and I will leave gaps in our prayers to allow us the space to bring those things to Almighty God. Remember that we stand before him in the throne room. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you boldly with our prayers, knowing that you hear and answer prayer, knowing that you are interceding for us as the great high priest, standing before the Father, as it were, with the marks in your hands, your feet and your side, and saying to the Father, this is what I've done for my people. And so we know that our prayers are heard because of your great sacrifice and because you are now ascended on high. In our prayers today, Lord Jesus, we bring before you those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We remember before you Sheila Waddington, who is back in hospital feeling unwell. We're asked to pray 
for Holly. Soon Bob's granddaughter. And for the septic toe and the planned operation. And we ask you to heal, to strengthen and to be with them. We also bring before you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the silence of our hearts, those who, whom we wish to pray this day. Lord Jesus Christ, as we remember thy kingdom come, we bring before you in our hearts those for whom we are praying at this time, that they would be renewed and touched by and through the power of your Holy Spirit. King of kings and lords of lords, we bring before you those who rule in authority. We pray for your blessing on the majesty of the queen and the royal family this day. We pray for her government, for Boris Johnson, the cabinet, for those in parliament, that this nation will be governed according to your wisdom and according to your pleasure. Lord of Lord and King of Kings, we bring before you your church and in this time of lockdown and with the church has closed, we pray that our faith would be renewed, that we would feel the presence and the ministry of your Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives. And Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, in our prayers today, we ask that you will give us our own personal Pentecost. Then as we look forward to next Sunday, we pray that we would know the power of your spirit this day. All of these prayers we offer to you, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayer for today. Grant we pray, almighty God, that as we believe you, our only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude our prayers by saying, Most merciful Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we've come to the point in our service where we can share virtually the peace with one another. So the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you, hallelujah. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace of the Lord. Come here, laptop. <laughs> Come here, laptop. Peace be with you. High five. Be careful. I don't want to knock the laptop over. <laughs> well, now we've finished circulating around the building with one another. It's a lot quicker, isn't it, the piece now? <laughs> the piece is, it seems to be a lot quicker. Yeah, we, we, we don't move as much, do we? So don't you think we do miss out on that? Just going up to people and just saying, peace be with you. Just yeah. in that freedom, that moment. And yeah. It is, it is, it is a bit strange at yeah. the moment. But it's in that peace that we now turn to our communion prayers, our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of ascension, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has 
conquer the powers of death and hell. And we stood in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of our life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with St. Thomas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's just join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. As we share together, remember in your heart, Christ raised from the dead, ascended on high, seated at the right hand side of the Father for every single one of us, who shared with his disciples at the Last Supper and shares with us through his Spirit now. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. And so together we join in with the words of the prayer after 
communion. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to our prayer of blessing and um, before we do that, Barbara, is there anything else we need to tell people about today or tomorrow? Um, we're here tomorrow at 9am for morning prayers. Um, you can catch up on the Facebook page, anything that's been missing, have a look through, see if you've, um, some videos have been posted from Thy Kingdom Come. One will make you cry, but they're very powerful. Today they're looking at forgiveness and, and sorry and the, the wrongs that we do. Um, yeah. Yeah, but no, th thank you for the service of Holy Communion. Um, I was I I went in I was reading a conversation people were having about whether um people thought church was um important as in would they go back to church um yeah, yeah. when this when this whole lockdown um ceases or is it just better to do it online and I think when you do holy communion and the importance of it it really brings home that we are actually really missing this and the community of yeah. people that we are around. So there's a lot more to church than actually just stay, be in the comfort of our own homes, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were always meant to, to, to gather together, whether that's in a church building or whether it's in homes. Yeah. Um, the whole picture of the New Testament is Christians coming together physically. And in fact, there was that exhortation from Hebrews not to not to neglect the gathering of yourselves together. Mm. Um, now, at the moment, we don't have a choice, but when it is possible, we should be coming together as a church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but thank you for taking communion on our behalf. Thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave won a glorious victory and ascended on high, lift your hearts by faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of the Ascended Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. If you were wondering where you were sent to today, Reverend Dave, it was the old city in Jerusalem. Yeah. The, the upper room, the old city of Jerusalem. No place better. There we are. There you go. So all we left to do is to bid everyone a wonderful day. Um, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for morning prayer. Yes. Bye, folks.
I cry to him for help when the cords of the grave and the snares of the enemy surround me. My cry came to him from his throne, he heard my voice. The mountains trembled, his voice thundered in the sky. The seas drew back as he reached down from on high, swift to rescue me. For he delights in me. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, he is my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock, he is the one that I take refuge in. The Lord is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. The Lord is my rock, he is my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock, he is the one that I take refuge in. The Lord is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. of the Lord are perfect and pure. In Jesus we are blameless, forgiven, freed from sin, ever righteous. He is faithful and he holds us in his hand and he keeps us. For who is God besides Jesus our Lord? And who is this rock? Nobody but our God. And who has won the victory? Who enables us to stand? Only Jesus. Only Jesus. salvation my Jesus 